as we look at 1 John chapter 4 together. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who does, is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this the love of God was manifested toward us that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. And this is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Amen. For the washing of the water of the Word over our lives. So the context of 1 John we've talked about is that John is writing about those who truly have fellowship with the Father, and therefore we have true fellowship with one another. Last week we talked about that, previously we had talked about how through our righteous living, through our confession, and then last week we talked specifically that by our love we would show that we truly know the Father. Now, he continues that vein, uh, John does, in verse 7. But sandwiched between these verses about love and being marked as people of love, he brings this interjection almost. So we talked last week that our love is to be unconditional. Can I get an amen? amen? But what John is saying here is that this love is not compromising. This is a love that walks in wisdom, not ignorance. This is a love that is of God and is not carnal. This is a love that speaks the truth and walks in the truth. You know, we, uh, we hear many times, and, and, it, it, and it's the right thing we need to emphasize, that we are to be trusting and to be loving and to be walking in that, in, that, in that confidence of love. But the word of God is clear, true friend. That we are called to walk in discernment. We are called to walk in discernment. Do you notice here what it says? It doesn't say, test everyone. It says, test every spirit. Test every spirit. Now, I, I want us, you know, we in the West, we, we have a tendency, you know, there's that pendulum that swings many times where you have, you have this side sometimes where it's, it's like a demon behind every teapot. And then on this side, we almost explain everything naturally. And the truth is the Word of God is our standards. And we want to know a biblical worldview. Can I get an amen? amen? We don't want to have an American Western worldview. We want a biblical worldview. Because that's the view of truth. That we are not being misled or being captivated by a carnal mind and the influence of our culture. But that we are being in control as we are commanded to be filled. Be continuously filled with the Holy Spirit. Be spirit controlled. Paul's talking in Romans 8. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded. That's what God's called us to be. Spiritually minded. That's life and peace. And so we see this, this command from scripture to test. You know even in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Despise, do not despise prophecies. 
That's good. We don't want to despise prophecies. But then Paul says what? He says, test all things. Somebody say all things. Okay. All things. Hold fast to what is good. So what, what is this pendant we need to come back to? I just want to read out a couple of, a few scriptures right now for us to get a biblical worldview of how we should be walking and carrying ourselves in this life concerning testing the spirits. Right away as I was praying about this, I thought again, if, if you, if, if I, you probably heard me share this before, but Matthew chapter 16. What a powerful uh, revelation of how quickly we can be influenced or someone can be influenced by the Spirit of God and then turn around and be influenced even by the enemy. Peter, one of the, the chief, the inner three of the circle whom Jesus loved so much and revealed so much, to him was chosen to declare, who do you say that I am? I am, he says, you are the Christ. The son of the living God. And Jesus is upon this rock. Upon this confession. This is the bedrock of the church. The revelation that Jesus is the Messiah. The son of the living God. There is no church without that revelation. So he, he, he declares this. And then Jesus says. Simon you are blessed. Simon Barjona you are blessed. This revelation. This has not come by flesh and blood. This has come by my father in heaven. So this amid, I mean, I can imagine Peter just like feeling the anointing of God and you are the Christ. The Son of the living God. I mean, you could, I bet you as he felt the power of God come upon him as he declared it. Because that's what happened. The Spirit of God comes upon you. You don't speak kind of like wishy-washy. It comes with authority. It's from heaven. It, it's, he, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. But then in the same passage, we read, Jesus then begins to declare about his suffering and what he's going to endure on the cross. And then Peter, which could be hours or minutes or a day later, it's right in the same passage. He turns and says, forbid it, Lord. And that seems like it was a good intention. Seemed like he was speaking out of a heart of love. You love Jesus. Wait a minute. It's got to be the love that comes from the Spirit. Yeah. Not a carnal love. Yeah. What's a carnal love? It's what Peter revealed. It's a self-preservation. Mm -hmm. When you're more concerned about people's safety than the, them doing the will of God, that's a carnal love. Mm -hmm. When you're more concerned about how someone is faring, I'm, I'm glad you're good, I'm sorry. If you're more concerned about how they are uh, with their own even physical safety than, than, it, than you are, that they've done the will of God, that's not, that's not, the, will, that's not the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, what does Jesus say to Peter? I mean, can you imagine? Get behind me, Satan. For you have your mind on earthly things, not heavenly. That's how the devil wants. He wants us to be so consumed with ourselves, we're just concerned about our own self, own self preservation. That's how the enemy works. That works a lot to keep him from the will of God. That keeps a lot of people in the boat. They don't want to step out because they want to be safe. I'm telling you, friend, as someone said, I think it was Wimber who said, faith is spelled R I S K. If you want to see the glory of God, if you want to see God move, you've got to, you've got to take a risk. Yeah. That's how it works. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. I don't believe what I know. I believe because I have faith. I know what I know. I don't have to believe for what I know. I don't have to exercise faith for what I know. I have to have faith to step out in a place where it is, it's uncomfortable. Out of the, it's out of my normal flesh that's trying to say, don't do it. And that's where the place we see God's glory. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 5. 
in the midst of revival, in the midst of the move of God. Can you imagine? Pentecost has come. The Spirit of God falls. They begin to speak in tongues and they, they're filled with God and Peter's out there preaching and 3,000 3, are added to the church. God is doing amazing things. They're in community together. The power of God's falling signs and wonders. And in the midst of this, they bring their portion to sell. And then there's Ananias who holds back. And what is, what is the revelation? What does Peter say? Why? He says this. Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? Come on, friend. This is a, this is a believer. This is what the Bible's teaching us. The Lord is bringing revelation for our edification and that we would walk in a wise manner. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen? This is a warning to all of us. Again, how do you think the devil did that? Self-preservation. Just in case. 1 Peter chapter 4. Now the Spirit expressly says in the latter times, some will depart from the faith apostasia in the Greek. I know that messes with a lot of people's theology. We have God to stay in the Word of God. There will, people, there will be people in the last days, and I believe we are in the last days, that they will leave the faith that they once professed. Why will they leave the faith? Because they will give heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons speaking lies and hypocrisy having their own conscience sealed with a hot iron forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth spirits will be speaking to believers You know, I just got off the phone a couple of, uh, before I left for Papua New Guinea, and I, I almost forgot this brother because I only I only was with him for a couple of days. He calls me up from the Maryland area. area. He says, "Wait, do you remember me?" He left a message. I'm like, I'm going through my mind, going, "Who is this?" They said they they met me in Pine Ridge, and then finally. <laughs> I don't suggest this, you know, sometimes you just call and then you just hope that the Holy Spirit brings the revelation even as you're talking to him. And sure enough, it came. I was like, oh my goodness, I know who this guy is. So as I'm talking to him, he had this heart for Native Americans and he had been, they had that specifically for, for orphans and for people that needed adoption and that was his passion. And he began to break down on the, on the phone and tell me, that when he began to do that ministry and began to go on to the reservations, suddenly he said, wait, I don't know what it was, but my wife suddenly started hearing. She said, the Lord spoke to her. The Spirit spoke to me and said, I am not to be with you any longer. And said, the Spirit said that I, I'm, I'm to divorce you. And he fought and he fought for his marriage. And she finally said, I'm out, and, they, and she divorced him. The Spirit spoke to me. Let me tell you, friend, this is a big thing that's going on even in the church. You hear people say, God told me this, and God told me that, and God, and you're hearing more about them hearing an inner voice than the Scriptures. Beware. Beware. Yes, I believe God speaks today. But the, the primary way, the pre- predominant way, is through the Holy Word of God. And I hear, I hear a lot of even conferences. We'll teach you how to hear the voice of God. Be careful. I, I'm, there's a man coming right now to my mind. And, I, and, I, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm praying for his repentance. But he's a well-known preacher. And all you hear him say is, the Spirit told me this, and the Spirit told me that. And, and what you hear him saying, what? no, that's not the Holy Spirit. That's not Jesus talking to you. 
And he's, he, is, he is replicating this to people around, trying to teach them how to hear the voice of God. And it is not anchored in the word of God. This is reality. This is what the word of God says. Acts chapter 16. You know what it says. There's a slave girl that gives much profit to her masters. She's following Paul. and She's crying out, these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And she did this for many days. Sounds like truth, doesn't it? But it was a spirit of divination. And Paul commanded it to come out because he, through the Spirit of God, discerned it was a false spirit. What a powerful example for us. And I think even in that passage, to me, what it speaks of, there's too much attention given to the woman saying to the men, these men are the servants. That's what I hear. And that's what, you know, I, Doug and I are going to share at uh, Tommy and Becky's house tomorrow. If you're able to make it, please come see Becky and Tommy. You raise your hands. If you guys want to come, you didn't already know, 430 tomorrow we're going to go to their house. We're going to have a great time of fellowship. You're welcome. We're going to worship fellowship. But I, I want to, Doug and I want to share specifically about some things that really impacted us about Papua New Guinea. But one of the things that came up, I'm not going to go into it fully right now, but... Doug knows there was a certain village we went in. There was a certain church leader we were there. And everyone on our team felt a check in our spirit. And he was speaking truthful things. But there was something like, no. this is, And I'm asking the Holy Spirit for revelation as I'm sitting there. And the Holy Spirit reveals to me, this is a spirit of mysticism. And I got up and I began to speak against it. And I'm going to tell you, you could, you could have probably felt something go flood through the atmosphere. But it was very subtle. We, are, we need to ask the Holy Spirit if this is true or if this is false. Listen, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I, I'm not going to, you hear, I'm focusing on this part. We're going to go over the rest of the passage, but I feel an emphasis to draw on this right now. Hey, wait, can I say something? Before? Yes. So he's not going to say it, but the pastor asked Wade, just like he opened the door. And Wade, just being Wade, just began to proclaim the scriptures. And it was in love. You could just, but that pastor's face, you could see the countenance change. And he, it, it was just, the word of God was just falling over and over and over. And this correctness started flooding back in the whole village. And it was powerful. It was powerful. But this man knows the word of God, amen. But he also has it in love, and so it was. It was a powerful time, and there was a time like Wade said. There was this huge gap, but that pastor came later and actually asked God to pray for him, so that the, the word of God hit in the correct spot, amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Amen. You know, and it was also powerful to see the people respond. At first, they were just going along. There was almost something like over yeah. them. And then when the word of God went out, they started to clap. They started responding to the word of God. Praise the Lord. It's a, it's a sword of the spirit. Amen? Amen. Dividing between the soul and the spirit. The joy and the marrow and judging the thoughts and intentions of the heart. That's what the word of God does. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. For such, Paul says in verse 13, are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves. Listen to that. Transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder... For Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing, Paul says, if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. Whose end will be according to their works. Friend, let me tell you, we are called to walk in discernment. We don't just open our, our arms up. To everyone. We love unconditionally, even our enemies we're called to love. We're to bless those who curse us. But we are not called to open up and to partner and to enter in to what is false. This is the difference between 2 John and 3 John. We're not going to look at those two letters, but that's the, that's the gist. 2 John, he's addressing the short little letter, and he says... This, this is a false teacher. 
Do not welcome them into your home. You are going to be participating in their ministry. Shut the door. And then in 3 John, he says, open the door. These are true servants. Show hospitality. So we are to walk in this discernment. And then, of course, Jesus says in Matthew 24, concerning the end times, he says, take heed lest anyone deceive you. So in closing an application, what are the two ways that we test? I've already said it. Number one, the scriptures. Amos 7.7. 7. He sees, shows a vision of the plumb line. The plumb line for you and me, friend, is the word of God. His word is the standard. Can I get an amen, Ken? Amen. Praise the Lord, my brother. The word of God is the standard. It is the standard. And, and listen, the word of God in context. You can make the Bible say anything. Yeah. I've said this before. Did you know that the, you can make the Bible say there is no God? Oh, yes, you can make it. You, Psalm 14 says there is no God. But what does it say in context? The fool has said in their heart, his heart, there is no God. See, it makes all the difference through context. You know, I, I don't want to get on too many tangents right now, but I, there's one that, that you, you, I, I hear sometimes, I go in some circles, and you hear people, like when we were in Pine Ridge, we heard this a lot. We bind the principality of this, and we bind the principality of this over Pine Ridge. Where, where, where are you seeing that in the Word of God? Where do you see to bind principalities? Where do you see Jesus or Paul binding principalities? Did they just not get that lesson? And then what they'll say, well, what about Daniel? D Daniel, you know, the, the, the prince of Persia came, and that was a principality, and that was... No, no, no. What's the context? What happens in the book of Daniel? He never, he's never binding principalities. He's repenting. He's repenting for himself and for the sins of Israel. And in that spirit of humility, in that spirit of repentance, the Lord moves in power, hallelujah, and sends Michael to fight. Yes. That is the context. Spirit of repentance, a spirit of humility. So we need to know. So we're not entering into something that is not righteous or is not. I, I, I could tell a testimony of people in India. A mission, this is a true testimony where they were binding principalities and all that. And all of a sudden they started having all kinds of, of presence, evil presence coming into this missionaries and they're binding the, the, the principalities over and then all of a sudden they see evil starts coming into their home. They start battling depression, discouragement. One morning they wake up and the iron fence is bent in the head of the snake looking towards their house. And as they're, they're facing and they're thinking, they're, I'm doing it, we're going to keep going. No, no, no. You're not, you're not moving in faith what the Bible reveals. And so praise God, there was a man of God who heard what was going on. And he said, you, you're not told to do this. This is not how the Bible reveals how we're to do missionary work. You need to repent. And they repented. And the next day, those iron bars were back straight again. The discouragement left. And they felt the peace of God come over their lives. We can only do what we are under authority to do. Can I get an amen? amen? Make sure that whatever we do, we do through the word of God and not on our own. I, I can go on. We can talk about being drunk in the Holy Spirit. I believe in being so filled with God that you're overcome. I believe in that. But as far as it just being an end of itself and just laughing and flopping on the ground and that's the end. No, that's not what the Holy Spirit does. They said, well, that's what they, on the book of, on the day of Pentecost, they were filled and, and they, were, they were drunk. And that's not what it says. It says they were perceived that way because they were speaking in tongues. And if you want to say that that's what, that's the end all, then you're missing it because the fruit of that time was P Peter speaking to the crowd and saying, repent. Amen. So if you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you're overcome that you feel like you're drunk, then you better start preaching repentance. <laughs> that's why the Word of God is our standard. And if we're the Word of God is our standard, we're going to be safe. Amen. We're going to be safe. Safe in the Word. Praise God. So now that I've gone on and on about that, let me finish and just close out with some things here. The Holy Spirit wants to bring emphasis to some things, and that's what I need to do. Amen. Well, let me just say quickly this. Yes, the Scriptures is that's how we test. And the second thing is the Holy Spirit who is the Spirit of Truth. 
He has given us the Holy Spirit. And let me encourage every one of you here. You know, we talk about the gifts of the Spirit. And I'm going to go, in the future Saturdays, we're going to get to the gifts. But one of the gifts that I believe we need to be asking for, and you rarely ever hear it from any, anybody teaching, but we need to be asking for the gift of discerning of spirits. This is a gift that the Holy Spirit gives to discern this is not of God and this is of God. Because through the natural eye, you can't discern. But the Spirit of the Lord will reveal to you this is in the Lord. And then the wisdom of how to deal with the situation. Praise the Lord for the... Thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving us discernment. Yes. Let's continue to keep asking for His help. So verse 4, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. We are not victims. Amen. Amen. We are called to be victors. Why? Because He who is in you is greater than the one who's in the world. And that, that doesn't just mean the enemy, which is true. That means anything of the world that's coming against you. And in my mind, this is how the Lord's revealed and spoken to me. When I feel the weight of warfare, when I feel the weight of stress, when I know the enemy's really coming at me, and I'm praying, and I feel like this, oh, there's this thing that rises in me that's like, as the, the pressure's coming in, the reality is, is that God is rising up. Hallelujah. When this is pressing in, greater is he that's in me. I feel that sometimes, when I, like when I was in West Africa, especially feeling so much uh, oppression, then I would feel, as I waited on God, this, this, this anointing rising in me, that when the enemy's coming in, it's like, no, but God dwells within me. I'm not a victim, I'm a victor. And it, you, it's like you feel that power coming, and, it's, and it no longer are you like cowering, and like going, oh, I hope it goes away. It's like now it's like, get behind me in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. That is the victory we have. We are called to be victors, overcomers. This is what we have come this is God. God has the final word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Friend, that's what it comes down to. What is the dividing line John's saying here? The world doesn't hear you, but if, if, if you're hearing what God says, then you're of God. What's the dividing line? It's right what John finishes right here. By this we know it's whether it's truth or it's a lie. That is where people will listen, and that is where the Spirit of God reveals. He is the Spirit of truth, and that is what He will declare, and that is what will lead us to the one who is called the truth. Amen. That is where the dividing line is. Let me say this also. It says right here, they speak, you see John just saying, this is how it is. And I want to encourage everyone here tonight. This is why we can't argue. We, we're, not, we're not called to argue. We're called to be persuasive. We're called to, to make appeals. And we're called to warn. But we're not called to argue. And, and the reason why is because there is a reality that 2 Corinthians 4 forces that the God of this world has blinded their eyes. There's a reality that we need to recognize. It's God who opens the eyes. We are called to sow. Amen. We are called to water, and we're also called to reap. But God gives the increase. God gives the growth, that the glory goes to Him. This is the verse I want to lead, I want to submit to you concerning that passage about not lying. This is why we don't argue. Second Timothy chapter two. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes. Paul tells Timothy, knowing that they generate strife. And the servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all. Able to teach, patience, in humility, I mean, you hear it, boom, 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 gentleness, humility, patience, correcting those who are in opposition, if, listen, this is the Apostle Paul speaking, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, if God, perhaps, will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Remember, to my friend, that's so freeing. It's so freeing to give it to God. Yeah. 
If you've done your part, if you share what God's called you to do, then you give it to him. And you just say, Lord, would you have me to say anything else? But I'm going I'm to approach this gently because only you can give repentance. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our confidence is not in our persuasiveness, but the Holy Spirit to help us to speak what we should and trust Him with the results. So let's finish. Like we said, it's bookended. It's bookended. Beloved, let us love one another. Here He goes. Bam! Right back again. You don't stay in this place of being too skeptical. You walk in discernment, you're called to love. Let's bring it back. Don't stay in that place. Otherwise, you could turn into the person looking behind every teacup, teacup. Don't do that. You come back to this place again. He's bookending it with this love. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Even the ones that were against, uh, or were even against us, we are called to love them. We are called to forgive them. Praise the Lord. Even the people that you just want to go, pull out your hair. You're called to love them. Amen. That's what we are commanded to do. And this is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us. Come on. See, this, this is what John is showing here. He's showing two things. Number one, this is a holy love. This is a sacrificial love. This is not a, a fuzzy, subjective love. This is a love rooted in truth. Come on, praise the Lord. Why? Because there's a lot of things that have been done in the name of love that is not loving. It's actually enabled people to compete, keep in their sin. That's not love. That's sympathy. The love of God draws, draws people closer to Jesus. And it's, sometimes it's got to be tough. Sometimes you have to have tough love because that's the love that, that draws them to a place of revelation. Because you can intervene and interject and you have just messed up what God's trying to do. So you just say, Holy Spirit, you lead me. I want to love them in the way that's in truth so that I don't just follow my own emotions. Holy Spirit, lead me. That's on one side. On the flip side, there are those people that say they love God, but they walk around in a condemning disposition, and they really hate, even though they say they love. That's the other side. This is the Pharisaical side. I love God. I, no, you, you're, you're full of condemnation, man. You speak in a way as if no one can ever change. Come on. You condemn people as if they can't repent. That's not right either. Call it for what it is. That's wrong. That's error. But believe for God to bring repentance to them. Because you would want people, if that was you, but by the grace of God. Paul says, those who think that they're standing, take heed lest you fall. We are only going forward by the grace of God. Amen. So where does this come, when, come from in closing? It's, it's right here. It all comes from the throne of God. all comes from the Lord. As much as we are connected to the Father, as much as we are connected to the Lord in our secret place, as we behold Him, as we worship Him, as we spend time with Him, as we draw near to Him, we become like Him. Yes. We are reflecting on where He has pulled us from, even as... Benita led us in the beginning. We, we remember, and Brother Dennis prayed out, you remember where you've come from. How can I throw a stone? I am only saved by the grace of God. So that love fills us and we're able to reflect where He has saved us, where He has pulled us from, and therefore we're able to extend that grace and that love to other people. It comes back to the cross, doesn't it? It always comes back to the cross. We would stand before the Lord and be ready to give an account. Praise the Lord. So I want us to close in prayer. I want us to pray tonight. I want to encourage you even this. I really believe, friend, Scripture memory changes you. Please, I just want to exhort you tonight. Here are some awesome verses, whether that's chapter 4, verse 1 that we looked at. Would you, would you purpose in heart even this week 
to memorize one of these verses. Whether that's verse 1, verse 4, or verse 7 and 8. They're all powerful. I just want to encourage you, get the word in your heart, friend. It will change you. On the day of battle, friend, you don't have time to go back and say, hold on, hold on, let me go get my sword. I left my Bible over here. In the moment of temptation, in the moment of that warfare, it's got to be in you so it comes out of you just like that. So I want, I want to encourage you, just, just, just take a verse. I, I pray every week that you would, I always challenge you, friend, just take one verse. And if you can do more, awesome. Just take one verse and memorize it. It will change your life. I tell people, I don't know what it was, but for me, about 50 verses. I don't know what it was, but it changed me. I, I, after 20, I saw a change happening. When I got to 50, it was like I felt uh, authority and a power come on me, and I changed. And then I just kept going. And it's only been more rewarding the more, by the grace of God, I can hide his word in my heart. Amen. Let's pray together right now. Let's call on the Lord. I want you to pray and ask him where you are for that love to fill you right now. Pray that you would see people through his eyes, that you would feel his emotions. But right now, let's pray right now, we would be a discerning people. We would remember that we're commanded to test every spirit.